All right, how to compute IM2 of an RF block. Um, so imagine you have an RF block shown here uh, in a simplistic manner with input voltage applied V in and output voltage up, uh, obtained V out. Ideally, what we want from this block is we get V out, a voltage gain, and times V in. You can also translate this to power relationship with A squared. But in practice, what we get is something including the non-linearities non of this RF block. So um, what you get is V out is AVN plus, let's say, A 2V in a squared plus A 3V in cube and so on. Forget about this component for now. Let's focus on this guy, which is the second order nonlinearity of RF block. We want to be able to get an idea or approximation of if we apply a tone like this at frequency omega with power Pn, what happens to the power of inter second order intermodulation product or IM2 uh, like this? Um, what would be the power of that and what's the relationship between that power and input power and uh, the characteristic nonlinear second order nonlinearity characteristic of this RF block, which is usually characterized as intercept point of second order. So this is referred to as SOI sometimes, like second order intercept um, intermod product or something like that. So it can be that or uh, IP2. So we want to get an idea about the power of this second order intermodulation product. Well, think about it this way. This is y-axis as v out, uh, or let's put it in power. It's better. Power at the output uh, in dB scale. And here is the power uh, input in dB scale again. So if it was an ideal amplifier with no nonlinearity, you only have this relationship shown here. And for example, you would have something like this guy. So you apply um, a power Pn, you get a power APn shown here, but in dB scale. In dB, when you take log out of the uh, two sides of this equation, you get a tangent of 1 for this, of course. You get 20 log out of this guy, 20 log V out becomes 20 log A plus 20 log V in. So relationship between 20 log V out and 20 log V in has a, has a scalar of 1, which corresponds to this tangent 1. Now, if um, you consider a second order nonlinearity, then it's as if there is another component that, let me extend this guy, there is another component that has this sort of a curvature. So it has tangent of 2. As the power is increasing, hypothetically, um, there is a point. So let's say tangent 2 between v, uh, 20 log of p in and 20 log of p out. There is a point that these two uh, components, the first order and the second order components, are going to intercept. And that's why it's referred to second order intercept point. This never happens with just a hypo hypothetical point. And this is the point that at input, the value at this point is input referred second order uh, intercept point. And uh, when it crosses this hypothetical point, output also has the value of OIP2, which in dB scale, uh, you can just say it's equal to IIP2. Uh, all right, so now the thing is, if we apply Pn, there is this um, intercept point, intermod product of second order that we want to see what its value is. All right, so this point Pn is delta dB below IAP2. We know the relationship between y-axis and x-axis on this line is has, has a scalar or has a tangent of 2. So if you see a delta uh, 
change in the, on, on the x-axis that correspond to two delta change on the y-axis. So from this point down to here, you go down by two delta. So now we can say uh, this point is IIP2, and then we go down by two delta, we get to IM2. So we can say IM2 in DBSK power is uh, PN. Again, we are talking input referred. Uh, I'm sorry, not PN. It's IP2, uh, IIP2, this point in DB minus 2 delta in db so it's equal to um, it's equal to iip2 minus i'm going to replace delta with iip2 minus pn so it becomes obviously uh, 2pn again in db minus iip2 in db and this is IAM2 or IM2 input referred. You can write the same relationship, output referred, doesn't matter. So that's how we get an approximation of um, the second order intermodulation product for a nonlinear RF block.